That's it. That's it. That's it. That is a whole new level of breakthrough in your life tonight. A whole new level of breakthrough in your life tonight. Kura bashanda robo shiki yara bashanda robo shiki yara bashanda robo shake de bashande. If you don't open your mouth, the Holy Spirit can't talk. All right, now I want everyone to raise your hands and we're going to pray in tongues. Hallelujah. Let's do it. Oh, we love you Jesus. So kohora shada kahala busi. Holy Spirit, fall. He's here. Feel his power. Feel his power. This is you talking. And the Holy Spirit is just going to whisper in your ear what to say. You have the answer. Don't stop. Don't stop. This is the greatest day of your life next to the day you got saved. Southern Baptists changed their policy on speaking in tongues, and they will now admit missionary candidates who speak in tongues. According to this article, speaking in tongues is an ancient Christian practice recorded in the New Testament in which people pray in a language they do not know, understand, or control. In the name of Jesus, you be made whole by the power of God. Let's take a look and see what the Bible actually says about speaking in tongues. Actually, the term speaking in tongues is never found in the King James Version of the Bible. You have to get one of these new perversions of the Bible, like the NIV, to find that phrase. In the King James, the terms we have are speak with new tongues, speak with other tongues, speak in our tongue, speak with tongues. The term speaking in tongues is never found. Let's take a look at Acts chapter 2 to see what the Bible says about speaking with tongues. Acts chapter 2, verse 1 through 11. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire. And it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded, because that every man heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? And how hear we every man in our own tongue, wherein we were born, Parthians, and Medes, and Elamites, and the dwellers in Mesopotamia, and in Judea, and Cappadocia, and Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, and Pamphylia, and Egypt, and in the parts of Libya, and Cyrene, and strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes, Cretes and Arabians, we do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. Notice that the Bible defines the word tongue for us here. In verse 4, it says, they began to speak with other tongues. And in verse 6, it says, that every man heard them speak in his own language. So tongues are languages. Also notice that these languages are understood languages. It is not this Pentecostal gibberish that no one understands. All throughout the Bible, the word tongue is either 
the physical tongue that is in your mouth, or it is talking about a language. The purpose of this miracle in Acts chapter 2 was to get the gospel of Jesus Christ into every nation and tongue. See, if we look at Acts 2 verse 5, there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. So there are people in Jerusalem at that time out of every nation under heaven. The Bible tells us, If any man speak in an unknown tongue, let it be by two, or at the most by three, and that by course, and let one interpret. But if there be no interpreter, let him keep silence in the church, and let him speak to himself and to God. So no more than two, at the most by three, and by course, you know, in order, take turns, and let one interpret. So what is an unknown tongue? An unknown tongue is simply a language that you do not speak or understand. Chinese is an unknown tongue to me. I do not speak or understand Chinese. So someone shouldn't come into the church that I go to and start preaching in Chinese unless they have an interpreter. The Bible is very clear here that if there isn't an interpreter, people should not speak in unknown tongues. And also notice that it is by course, in order, one at a time, and only two or at the most by three. Is this what we see in the so-called tongue-speaking churches? Absolutely not. We see a bunch of people speaking gibberish and no one knows what they are saying. The person doing the speaking doesn't even know what they are saying. For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all churches of the saints. So if God is not the author of confusion, what is causing these people to sometimes uncontrollably speak things that they nor anybody else understands? I believe that this modern gibberish speaking movement is either one of two things. Either they are faking it, or they are actually demon possessed. Take a look at some of these people. They have no idea what they are saying, and many times they cannot even control their body movements. Can you fake it? You can learn it. If you can learn it, you can fake it. <laughs> Some of the young people we met actually did admit to faking it, at least in the beginning. All these teenagers around me had this ability that I never really understood or wanted to be a part of. And so because I felt kind of left out and ashamed that I didn't have it, I started faking it. And it was just like make up words and just say whatever came to my head just to, because everybody was doing it. But at a teen prayer meeting like this one, Brian Hepolite says he finally got the gift. The actual gift of speaking in tongues is something that's real sacred, that's between you and God, that you can't fake or imitate. Those who claim to have the ability to speak in tongues believe that they've been baptized in the Holy Spirit. But to a newcomer, it's incomprehensible. I probably sat about midway through a service and then thought, those two people up on the stage, and that was Pastor Randy and Paula White, are crazy. Looked like chaos to me. People falling on the floor, people praying and things that I didn't understand, and, I, and the band singing and everybody, and I turned around and I walked out. Jacqueline Knight says she's not quite sure how it happened, especially in light of her sober religious background. But five years ago, she became a believer and now is a spokeswoman for the church. So when you pray and you don't really, it's not really me talking. It's the spirit inside of me communing to God. But like most who speak in tongues, she has no idea what she's saying. It's almost like a baby learning to talk. When you're a baby and you learn to talk, you have certain sounds. So when you first start speaking in the spirit, there's certain sounds that you make and you don't know what they mean. I don't know what it is I'm saying, but if you were to ask me right now to say something in my prayer language, yes, I could pray in it. Do I know what words are going to come out right now? I could say, um, did that mean anything? My sp it meant something to my spirit, man.
Remember, God is not the author of confusion. Also, for God have not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. These people are not of a sound mind. Be sure to like the video, leave a comment below, and if you have not already, be sure to subscribe to our channel. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for more videos. Thank you.